It was a very good script, and it was um, it was really scary, actually. I, what it and the the house was evoked really well. Stephen's knows I mean, he's forgotten more about the genre than I'll ever know. What it uh, what I brought to it was the sense of um, loss and the idea that the film didn't just address the fact that ghosts exist and now we're sort of going to scare you with them, but the idea that it addressed in some way why we see them and, and that grief and loss would be something to do with that, this need to fill the gaps in, in your life. And <clears throat> moving it from the Victorian period to the 20s, which the original script was in, was a Victorian one, and a bit more gothic and there's you know, more lightning and that sort of stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, the... Uh, sounds like I'm being really unfair on the script. I don't mean that way. You know. um, um, but uh, it appealed. This, uh, well, as soon as I sort of thought of this idea that actually it could be, it could be what fuels the need to see them, and that could be at the heart of it, and it could become a film about that with jumps and scares rather than a horror film that I was trying to then work some emotion into, then I, th then I thought, oh, right, now I, know I, now, now I know I could make it, and I know what, how I would approach it. When we, had, uh, we first met about it, and I'd sent the script to Rebecca, I did tell her I'd, I'd, um, I'd had her in mind when writing the script, and her face sort of fell <laughs> as she realised I was a stalker. Um, yeah, I did, but you it's do... Not true. Uh, um, it's not strictly true. It's I had you in mind either, dear. But the, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I did, but you do... You, you, do, you, you or have to... I mean, there'll be writers here. You have to have somebody in mind when you're writing, and that doesn't have to be an actor. But it has to be, you have to have somebody. In this case, it was Rebecca, and I'd seen her in a friend of mine cut. In fact, the, the person who edited this, Victoria Boydell, uh, edited um, The White Sargasso Sea. So I'd seen that, and there were qualities, or, or rather um, just a dynamism to the performance in that that I thought would be, would, be, would, be worth, would be worth something to this. So, yes, so Rebecca became that. And it wasn't so much that I knew what Rebecca was like, because at that stage I thought she was American. And so it wasn't a sort of sense of me thinking, this is, a, this is I'm just going to grab a sort of Rebecca Hall type. But it was, I wanted Florence to have, um, there's a sort of strength to Florence, not unlike, I don't mean this in, in a pejorative way, but there's a sort of quite an equine quality to Florence. And there's a, there's a strength and an intelligence, but there's a skittishness and a vulnerability to her as well. And I, and I thought, actually, having seen the performance in, in, in well, it's like as I see, there was, she would be able to bring that. She would be able to realise that, and she had the technical gifts to do that. Uh, never mind the arc of change uh, that was necessary. That was definitely the attraction for me. Was that it's a, it's a, it's an interesting challenge to play someone who's in extremity so much of the time. I'd never done anything like that. It's one mm -hmm. thing to play emotions that are very familiar and sort of drawing room-ish. Um, it's another thing to be running through the woods screaming for your life. Um, and I'd never done that, so that was something that was appealing. I think, I think you know, every film needs to be a leap of faith. I think if you know all the answers before you set out, I think you're jiggered. And I think the film will be dull, and the TV programme will be dull. And I think the, there needs to be this gulf of when you do first meet, the sort of somehow we're going to have to do that. You know, I think that needs to exist. And, and the finding Absolutely. of that is, is, the, is the collaboration, firstly. And you can't go with this sort of thing with me with the full idea of the exact, exactly what it's going to be. Because I think that's, then it's only ever going to be the, the limited sort of piece of work. No, the absolute truth is, of, of course I had reservations. And you always have reservations if it was a first time filmmaker. But I'd seen Occupation. I thought it was brilliant. And I met him and, um, you know, he's... He's eloquent and self-assured, and you know he's 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 persuasive. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, Be I Becca came over. About that. We were in Lordy. Edinburgh shooting in uh, the London, yeah. her London house, Florence's London house, and we. You remember the boy Walter has died at the school, and Bex walks over and 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 says that the art department done a cracking job on the doorstep. That's that's amazing, and I don't know what you're talking about, and in. Honestly, etched into the concrete in Dead Man's Scrawl. Yeah. Walter. With, was the name Walter, with scratched out like this in the, um, in the concrete. And that was 
that was, was freaky. Weird. Yeah, no, it really was. I still to this day think yeah. the art department was just having yeah, a joke and I don't me. believe all that sort of stuff. But once you're in it, you know, and also rumor goes around. So, so some somebody on one of the locations for the interiors, because the exteriors were all in Cheshire and the interiors were all the borders of, mm. of, of England of Scotland, um, and one of the grounds guys or somebody said yeah no a gun went off somebody had a shotgun funnily enough and it went off in the house by the time the story reached me a child had been murdered in the <laughs> house been, ha, you know and i think that's probably more insight into how this shit gets started than anything else yeah there's no doubt about it that the traditions of that victorian aesthetic work i'd be interested when we see um uh, james watkins um Woman in Black, because that, that, that you know I, I've, seen, I've seen some of the sets of that. That's just to look at. It's scary. So there's a there's a great merit to that. Um, I think the I was keen for the scares to be much like when when you watch a drama. You if you feel you've earned the information or you spotted it, you're the one that's garnered the information. Then I think it's a little bit more rewarding. And I I guess I just like that idea that that that, that to look at that, the outside of that house. It's Pemberley for Christ's sake. It's it's mm. you know it's it's not scary. And for the, us to earn the scares, I th I'm hoping that that be, ends up cumulatively more rewarding because you feel you're the one that's, that's told the story effectively. Um, and, and John Henson, the designer, well, from the very outset, we, we talked about austerity and loss and grief and not having darkness and, and, and all that. And I'd said no darkness. And we eventually did that middle sequence in the dark. But, but um, if only to give a bit of texture to the, to the, to the sway of the film. But the... Um, we were intent on he had he had pictures from Wilhelm Hammershoy and these sort of austere if anybody knows those I didn't but I now pretend to have known them all my life um, never heard of Hammershoy <laughs> um, <laughs> but no that much more austerity is to do with that and I think that 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 I think gives a fresh sense of 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 uh, the, super, the, the the uneasiness you know Completely, because he didn't, he doesn't, firstly, I, I'm probably being completely ridiculous, but I get the impression the Spanish have a, a, a more complicated relationship with the dead, the notions mm. of the dead, than, 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 than our Christian tradition, mm. put it that way. Um, but Edu is, Edu is about, you know, it's, it's, he's about nine. I mean, it's depressing. He just sort of, you know, he, he has to bring his dad along almost. <laughs> um, but he is just mercurial in his ability to just look at something and, and find a, an interesting way of looking at it. And a very funny guy, the real deal. It was clear from you know it was clear from the first frame to us that he was the real thing. And you know we'll be talking about him you know forty years from now. Yeah, it's the, it's the same with with anyone. You always have to get on the same wavelength with the actor that you're in the scene with. You're you know you're you're acting. You're listening and reacting to someone, so you have to have to, you know, be on the same page to a certain degree or not, but to have a dialogue about it. So it's the same regardless. I, I, think. I would say they were both interested in being on the same wavelength as well. There's plenty of actors mm. that aren't. They mm -hmm. come up, just let me do my thing and let me go home. You know, I don't even quite know why I'm here, sort of thing. And they they were really intent. On, no, no. I mean, it's because a lot a lot of gigs are professions, professional jobs for people. Mm. Rebecca and, and Dominic and Imelda. I mean, they, they're just I can't overstate the the application and they were just interested in being working you know together and and the wavelength thing which we can take for granted now is in the response to your question but actually that just the fact that they were seeking that is is a, is a credit to them but you I don't know it, breaks, until you do it i think the chemistry is broken by people that try too hard to tell the chemistry i think if they just perform yeah. the part play the part play the realism of the part we're in the audience. We're the, cin we're the audience. I want these two to get together. Let me work out the chemistry. I think you get too much sort of, I'm going I'm to try and play the chemistry. I don't, to my knowledge, I'm, uh, and I'll bet you Dominic supports this, these guys didn't play chemistry. They played themselves. They played each other. They played, you know, they played themselves with their own problems and that let, the rest, let, let the rest happen here for us. Mm. No, it, was, it, was, it was incredible. There's a, <laughs> you know, there's... Um, Working with children is, is always interesting. I know a little bit about it because I did a bit of acting when I was a child. And, you know, there's, it goes two ways. Either they're a little bit too experienced and they've started working out what it is that's expected of them mm. and the performance becomes quite sort of self-conscious. But if you get them at the right moment, then there's a sort of openness and... Yeah, just a sort of honesty that's, um, 
that's very refreshing to work with. And he was completely present and mm. listened and just responded. So it felt incredibly real, the scenes with him. It wasn't, you know, you didn't really have to work at it in that sense, which is, this is the kind of magic that you want to happen with an actor. Uh, you don't cheat. I think one of the things we said very early is you don't have, we don't have bird in the woods moments. You know when you're in a film when the birds fly out of the woods and then, oh, God, it's just birds. <laughs> you sort of feel resentment. I always feel a bit, you cheated me, you know, and, and, and it's a bit like being cheated in emotion. You're, 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 all you're doing is tricking me into caring about this person and then having something horrendous happen to them. And, and like anything else, you don't cheat, and it's doubly true of this genre. So, um, improvised booze, no. I just don't think, you, it's too manufactured, the whole thing is too, that, that element is pre-thought. Yes, of course, 50% of what directors, the decisions directors make, how, whatever we say in the press junkets, isn't pre-calculated, it's just the way we feel the film. And we can work out afterwards why we felt it that way, and we can probably, that's perfectly, perfectly valid, but you, you, the, the, it is a calculated process of calculating, wh calculating when you're going to do those boos. And, and it, w they weren't working. I think Daniel Pemberton's brilliant score in this, in this film um, contributes to it because, they, for example, when she goes to the bathroom hole, when he, he wrote a piece that was much more um, loving, much more about her affection for Mallory, and didn't have any tension in it at all. So when the boo came, you felt it was about, you tricked me, you know, I, you led me one way, not the other. And what he managed to do with the, with the piece that was there was Yes, it was sentimental, and yes, there was a sentiment there, but there was still this tension. I think the jumps only really work when there is already tension in the room. And the reason the cushion works, I don't know, I wasn't watching, I don't know, maybe you all went, oh, God. But <laughs> the reason, oh, tell me you didn't do it. Um, <laughs> but the reason, that, the reason that, that has worked for other audiences is, um, <laughs> is, because, um, is because there is a thread of tension there already about who's in the house and all that sort of stuff. We, we both knew, you know, she's alive. We, right, we said that. Ghost Hunter would be the... Ghost Hunter, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> no, we both it would be like alive. a Freudian. It would go and work through people's traumas. That's good. That's, that, was, <laughs> that was my idea. Um, <laughs> no, we, we sort of decided she'd be alive, but I wanted... Because the film had been about we see what we need to, that had been the central feel of the film, I thought it'd be just nice to let the audience see what they need to. If they feel... And, and interestingly, it played in Toronto, and most... Torontons, most Canadians, <laughs> um, thought she was dead. So oh. it's... It, How did you feel? Should we have a vote? A vote? Dead? Dead. Hands up. Yeah, she's dead. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's absolutely well, alive. Well, she smokes, and we, we figured ghosts <laughs> don't smoke. There are, there are, there are absolute reasons why was, she's what alive. I've been surprised, what I've been surprised about is that when I've said, yeah, yeah, but people saw them, Everybody said, yes, but the gingerhead boy sees ghosts anyway. They've remembered. It shows mm. you, actually, we are underestimating our audiences because there's two moments when, when that ginger boy turns and looks at, the, uh, uh, at Tom, and they happen at very innocuous moments, and yet everybody I've spoken to, when he's doing his shoelaces up and he says hello, everybody I've spoken to remembers that that's the boy who could see Tom. So mm. it is a, it is a, 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 that in itself tells me that the audi audience... But she says hello to someone else. Just before we cut, actually, just before we cut with the bench and the, the final empty chair of a film of empty chairs, we, she says hello to a boy, just low in the mix. Oh. At school I did a bit, yeah, the bullying is all me. Yeah. I was bullied, I wasn't <laughs> bullied. Yeah. yeah. I remember the, uh, I, opened, I opened up my textbook at school and somebody had a note saying, nobody likes you. Wow. Yeah, I know. Suck it up. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was bullied. I can tell you the story now. I'll not tell you his name. I was bullied by a boy at school. He was a sixth form. I was a junior. And years later, I saw him in, St. Pan in Paddington Station on the platform, and I walked up next to him. And by now, I was a bit taller than him. <laughs> and I remember saying, he, he said, he looked at me, and I said, do, do you know who I am? I, and I said, do, you don't know who I am, do you? And he, and he rolled his tongue inside his lip and said, should I? <laughs> and, and I called him his nickname, and I punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> And he fell over. I can remember he fell over. And I can remember walking into the tube station right ahead of this platform thinking, he's going to jump on me, he's going to jump on me. <laughs> it's a true story. Uh, he wasn't the one that did the note, but I got a bit of shit at school. <laughs> well, he's talking to his ghosts. And I, 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 it was always my intention, and, and that's one of the things Dominic liked about the film. Firstly, he, he liked, and I liked, and I think Rebecca liked, the fact that Dominic, the man, didn't kick down the door and save the girl. 
and that was quite, you know, you see a lot of parts for women that are strong women. And it turns out when you actually look at them, they're carrying a bow and arrow, and the man does all the work anyway. And it's not a strong part. Dominic liked that. And also the idea of, of characters having their own galaxies. And our, we're, our film is in Florence's galaxy, and that's it. But you can occasionally see into the galaxies of others and never fully, never fully go in there and investigate it. So I quite like the idea that there is a whole film to tell about Mallory that I have the rights to, um, <laughs> that, that, that you glimpse. But, but crudely, it also allowed for a little bit of distraction. So did, so did Tom being scared of the rabbit doll, uh, because if, uh, on the basis of you're, if, you're, if, scared, if Tom's scared, he's not the ghost. You know, you need to do that sort of stuff. And let's face it, it's a movie. We're telling a story, and that sort of fun along the way is all part of the game. You know. uh, yes and no. Um, it, I, did, I did do a lot of research about it. There were a couple of books that were really helpful and I, you know, I read stuff from that period. But then then I had to sort of let it go because she's not a typical woman mm. of this period and there was, is a bit of license taken in terms of who she is and she was right for the world of the film, um, not necessarily the, the historical world. So I had to make it right for the film mm. and not, you know, so... That's what I tried to do. Um, I thought it was very important that she was, uh, that she did appear modern in mm. our sense of it. Um, so I didn't, and there are other periods where I've, you know, there are other times where I've approached this kind of period and wanted to be much more period in the way I talk and the way I, you know, hold myself or dress or whatever. But this one I just felt actually was more important that the audience related to her as a modern woman now mm. um, because it makes her more unusual and mm. um, to us um, in that context, in that world. Also, she's, she's somebody that's technically a woman from the future in that period. We, we, we saw her as the person that women will become in <coughs> ten years' time. And I think that the dynamic is quite interesting that, that mm. actually her problem is that she's actually rather un horrifically locked in the past. Locked it's, in, the, the, yeah. You know, the, that sort of play off that dynamic we thought was quite mm. interesting. Well, it's very exciting. You actually see what it does because it's very difficult in this type of film to, to, to objectify and disassociate yourself from mm. the end product and try and be scared like an audience would be mm. for the first time because you know where everything's coming. It's, uh, it's quite unique in that sense. Mm. It's not like when you're watching a comedy that you've been involved in where you... You, you know where the jokes are, but you don't know whether they're going to be funny until you see it, because yeah. of the timing and all these things. You kind of, you, you know what the plot, so the suspense <laughs> is kind of killed. But that all turns on its head when you sit with an audience for the first time and, and watch it. Mm. And it was, it was really thrilling, yeah, was actually, great. when we saw no, it in saw Toronto, because that was the, yeah. really the first time I'd seen it with a group. And we were, on the, we were on the upper circle at Roy Thompson Hall, if everybody knows it. it's a very big space they've got there. And we were, we, we were watching-ish, but it was also the... the the, the staticness of an, of an audience is very revealing. The fact mm. that 1,800 people aren't moving at all, that's, that was more rewarding to me than the jumps. The jumps were big. And, they all, and in fact, on the, in the woods, when the boy comes in the woods, we had everybody jump, but we had about down there this three-second hammer house of horror scream from this woman. <laughs> 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 it was brilliant. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember she that. She was brilliant. She was great. I want to yeah. take her everywhere. Oh, she's my mum. So she's <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> and an interesting one at this one actually, because um, l logic and our sort of understanding of that period would have it that if she was going to be a modern woman at that time, she would have cut her hair into a bob. Right. But to our eyes, a bob looks like. I'm doing period. Yeah. So Nick had the very smart idea to have her have hair that was down and sort of nothing really, um, which was very modern looking. Brilliant. And I thought that was kind of brilliant. Yeah. Um, and women did wear suits. I mean, women did wear trousers right. in those days. Mm. I mean, very forward, particularly more in Europe, but they, they, wore, they wore them here. Well, at, at Victoria Boyd, firstly, Studio Canal were never impatient about it and the BBC were never impatient they were they were only ever supportive and I and I, I know people like me are supposed to come and say thank you to them and all that sort of stuff but they really were um, but Victoria Boydell the editor is is a woman of rare gifts and she is very honest about the sort of I can see what you're trying Nick but it's it's not working and she would 
or, or you know, or the reverse. You know, I can see what's happening. Let's make it better this way or whatever. Um, and it is really is trial and error. You do need to just keep working the moments, and and that becomes very weird because you, in the process, you become totally over familiar with those moments. So you you really yeah. are having to think. Okay, now we're trying to fine tune something that I just have seen fifteen hundred times. So it's very tricky. I mean, anybody we've all edited films, and that's the part of the process of anything. But um, with the jumps, it's doubly so. Yeah.